and fall in my fellow scout troopers and welcome to Napoleon Total War 3 4v4 battle replay today at 1814 Bladensburg. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the new intro, let me know what you think of it, just experimenting with something different. Now we'll have a look here today at Big Wolf's factions and he's got here, I think Wolf is commanding 1812 France Russie Center. We have over here Denmark and we have France Ryan and we have France Ostrich. Now, it looks like the red team has curiously deployed on the west side and the center of the map, so there's not much room left here for the blue team to deploy, unless they've deployed all on the east side and maybe to the north. Um, they're looking at the map here and where the possible deployment zones are, it really looks like the blue team deployed entirely on the east side of the map. So, it looks like this map kind of favors the blue team. I mean, we have here potentially two armies here of the red team, a wolf's army, and right now it's actually 4v2, so Denmark and France need to hold out until their allies arrive. Now, France here has some good cavalry forces here, Denmark mixed in with them, it makes them formidable. Hopefully France, let's have a look at the quality of the French cab, it looks like we've got some lancers here. We have here some dragoons, mid-tier dragoons, uh, more lancers. And yeah, we've got um, fast, light, hard-hitting cavalry, but um, so far no heavy elites for France, and that's a bit of a concern. If France wants to survive uh, a mass rush or like um, a surprise attack here from the blue team's forces, which vastly outnumber them, um, France and Denmark won't be able to hold out. They'll delay the enemy for a little while, but won't be that long. The only thing France and Denmark can do to survive until their allies arrive is to really kind of dig into this town here try and hold this section of the, of the ditch again won't be as easy as you think especially with the um terrain which would favor the blue team's artillery to be able to shell this position pretty effectively along the ridge here which gives a good elevation across the entire plain and so if denmark and france want to survive this then they actually have to pull their forces back and try to try to set up a perimeter just on the um, start of the town, the outskirts around here, you know? The terrain would offer some protection from the enemy artillery, and the buildings would offer also protection from the artillery rounds to some degree. Let's have a look here. Now these are the dragoons we saw earlier. So, it's a tough spot here for Denmark and France. Can they hold here? Will they be forced to retreat? That is the question. Now, France is sending out reinforcements, French Ryan. They're a little ways off yet. They are mid-tier Dragoons. Again, no, um, no elites, no armored cavalry. Now, oh, well, we've got our first heavy cav here, but this is just heavy cav. No armored cavalry, not yet. The roads here it does make it a bit easier for France to sort of move up to their ally. Now, this is um, a little weird that this player has gone this direction. You think you want to travel up the road straight to where his allies are at, rather than taking because this seems like the long way to go, the long way to march. Now, it would enable him to reinforce his allies' left flank, which I suppose you know the whole point of Napoleon Total War Three is to have a decent a decent battle line set up. Sorry about that, I've got something in my voice. So maybe he's just trying to get himself into a position straight away, rather than marching up the center and then marching all the way over here. Provided um, England Portugal doesn't harass Denmark's left flank too much until they arrive, this will be alright. We have Grenadiers here. Oh, we got the dreaded Grenadier unit here, France Ostrich. A lot of teams, a lot of players, when they use this, this is like their um, their nuclear option. If they use it and lose it, it doesn't really tend to spell a good outcome for the team or the player. Well, I should say the other way around, the player or in their team. So it, when he uses it, you got to make sure he's using it at the right moment. Easier than done, I know, but you know. We have seen teams use it in it at the right moment. I've used it at the wrong moment a couple times myself. Right, 
nice hits. Nice hits. Slamming into the Spanish artillery there. Well, you case man there. I'll just call him the Spanish, though. So. It's actually forcing the hand to limber up. I still remember this time I had this um, artillery I was moving into position, right? And they just limbered up. And I said they were just getting into position. I was about to delimber them. And then Russian artillery hit the horses and just took out my entire artillery and couldn't believe it. Um, eight pounder here from France. They're using the town well. They are actually set up at the front of the town. I thought that was a bit of a gamble considering how exposed they could be to the enemy artillery. But it looks like UK Espana here set up their forces, their artillery unit way too close. And they didn't have, they didn't have subsequent artillery units set up next to them. So they didn't have the combined might of their artillery in position. Looks like one of their teammates just went way too far ahead and um, well good on Denmark and France for repelling that first artillery piece. They would have actually dealt a bit of a blow to their confidence. UK España is actually moving in, is being highly aggressive. We know they had cavalry in position. But um, UK Spanish movement seem to be too aggressive by himself. I'm not seeing reinforcement infantry from any of the other factions. We have UK Spania, we have Austria, UK Portugal we saw earlier. And we have Russia here as well. Looks like they're trying to go after the, um, the French artillery. Well, we've got the bro we've got the routing trumpet sounding. They're being forced back. Comment down below if you feel like it. Give me give me your thoughts. Do you think do you think the blue team's alliance here should have tried to rush the town? I mean they had that cavalry in position already. Should, it, should the cavalry of the red team, sorry, the blue team, moves around the... I'm just trying to get my bearings right here. The eastern and western flanks of the Denmark and French forces, at the same time, the um, a large infantry contingent moved up the center and had probably actually um, bayonet charged them. Like, just rushed these two factions with, all, with the might of all four. At the same time, the cavalry from all the four blue team players just rushes into and overwhelms the Denmark and French cavalry and my question is to the blue team players now the coalition forces was that strategy ever considered or would you think that strategy would actually work given where you guys deployed like I'm not too sure where you started I got some I got some idea based on the um based on the loading screen here but do you think that strategy would have worked do you think you guys should have rushed this position charging the cav like Denmark and France made it clear that they're going to try and hold here their allies had a long way to march to get to them and anyone else comment your, comment your thoughts as well how this might have played out had the blue team immediately rushed this position here you know what's up a bit of a cavalry skirmish going on here France ostrich is charging into UK UK's cavalry It's a little bit curious that uh, England allowed themselves to get drawn into this fight when they didn't um, have infantry in position or didn't have their own cavs getting overwhelmed here. The general here could have been killed. Napoleon Bonaparte. He's over here by himself. I don't know if there's any other cab. I don't see any cab. Russia doesn't look like it has any of its um, Lancer units in the area. We've got to be wary though. You see Russia, you know they've got Lancers somewhere. And we've seen time and time again the surprise attacks from the Russian cavalry can be absolutely devastating to your team.
Denmark and France looking pretty entrenched here. It's not going to be very easy now to wrestle them from this position now that their allies have arrived. They've reinforced their left and right flank in the strongest way possible. Moving up the infantry first, Cav is following behind just in case they get rushed. And I'm liking the, liking the formation here of the Ryan and Rusty Center players. They got some, um, well actually, Rusty Center is a little bit concerning over here. I'm not seeing any squareables, but when I was talking before, I saw that the um, the Ryan player here had um, forces seemingly evenly spaced with squareables, you know? So his line won't be able to um, get broken entirely in the event of a mass cap charge into them. A unit will be able to form a square, catch that unit, halt their advance, potentially break them, take them out, align the, allow the rest of the um, line to regather itself and recontinue the offensive. Russian cab getting way too close here to the French artillery. It's going to be a turkey shoot. French forces, they're about to fire, they're in range. Oh, they just got out of range, good for them. Denmark has their skirmishes out front. Uh, the French infantry here might be getting pretty darn close to firing. Denmark's got to be careful of that. He doesn't want to get caught between his ally and, and Austria. He's going to lose that unit. Skirmishes are pretty valuable too. You don't want to lose them. Now hopefully Wolf here turned off the um, the French forces from fire at will. Now I think it's time to switch him back to fire at will. I think the Denmark skirmishes are clear. Now Wolf has a little bit of kink in the line here, obviously because Austria is coming at him from two different directions, it's not coming out at him from a straight direction. We've got a bit of a gap here, and the French artillery is looking to force the Austrians back. We have a uh, 12-pounder here and an 8-pounder. That's some decent firepower right there. Nice shots. Now, Austria might be able to rush the arty position, overwhelm them. The skirmish is being moved up, probably to target that artillery. Wolfie has reserves being set up behind the line. His own battle line though is being, could be outflanked. He's hoping the artillery from Ryan um, protects his right and holds his gap. Seems to be a lot asking this artillery here. Seem brave and ready for battle. Austria's line here is looking good. The question is, can it hold out against that artillery? And can the artillery hold them back? Can I ask that question either way? Now, France is getting drawn it's drawn into a long, long skirmish here, long skirmish phase. A lot of the English units have decent accuracy that can be superior to most French units. So France probably doesn't want to get drawn into a long a long combat shootout here. That's made it sound fancy if I adding the word combat, but a long drawn out shootout. What is Napoleon doing so far away from his army? Where is the rest of it? We should be able to see his forces. I mean, it's only the enemy's forces we usually can't see. Looks like Denmark's seen an opportunity to go after the enemy artillery. 
At least how tiny is this unit? Well done. Tiny units uh, are probably easy to go unnoticed. But that's the best use of a small cavalry unit I think I've seen in a long time. I've never really held them in high regard, I've always thought they were pretty useless, but uh, clearly they have some use. I'm looking forward to seeing what the artillery does to these guys. Oh, they charged straight in. Wolf, di Wolf didn't even wait for the artillery. Go on, bayonet. Go on, but the bayonet maneuver against Russia is ballsy but one beyond belief. I mean, what a bill. This is where Russia excels. We have French cavalry trying to reinforce the line, but it's, it's buckling. Uh, France has a grenadiers in battle. Austria here has been bunched up. France appears to be pushing them back, but Russia, Russia is breaking through. All the artillery needs to be turned onto the Russian line. They gotta try and push them back somehow. This cav needs to be brought back a little bit. Okay. The artillery ain't moving. So the French Dragoons will be able to break the entire Austrian section. Yep, we've got a mass chain right here. Cav is trying to destroy broken forces. Doing a bit of a major cleanup here. French runs right flank is buckling a little bit but the left and center are holding firm for now france here trying to engage austria might even try to send more reinforcements to move might send reinforcements to help ryan out on his right he's actually got one unit behind the, the russian line <laughs> these grenadiers here Our men are running, they're behind enemy lines But they're exhausted. I don't know if it's worth sending them into melee combat. Russia's pressing pretty firm over here. Espana is moving on Denmark. They're actually forcing their way into the town. Uh, UK and Espana here seem to be turning the tide on the right. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. France Ostrich had so little forces. He should not be doing this. UK Portugal has units that pretty much 99% of their infantry units can form square. But they were successful this time. France's counterattack has actually gone far better than I expected. I mean, they've held out with so little units here. These guys must be very, very good. And it'll hold back the English army. It, it seemed like they were falling apart, but then all of a sudden they've just turned things around straight away. I mean, full credit to the ostrich player. They've, they've annihilated the English army. They were seemingly outnumbered. It didn't seem to be going well for them, and then all of a sudden, bang, they just turned it around. Who would have thought such a small army could hold the left flank so well? 
against a superior sized force. And you can Portugal's no joke, they got good quality troops. Now Austria it looks like it is um reinvigorating their attack. Russia tried to step up, but um, it looks like France has held them off. And we've got some French cavalry there just killing some straggling forces. Austria is falling back and France is charging into them. You see, he has formed pike. And it looks like Wolfie has gone on the offensive. Now, France has Russia here outnumbered on the left. So they can start moving forces around to outflank them, begin following them up. Russia here is already trying to do the same to the, the on, to uh, France right on his right. The question is who can do it faster? No, they're, they're not going to waste time with manoeuvring. They're going to go straight in. Look, if they want to do that, they have to know Russia is going to react to it. So they've got to move up their battle line, their foreign line. Like these units here, they've got to move these forces up. And that he's doing that now. Good charge. It's possible the Russian general has been broken. We haven't really seen any general killed so far in today's battle. These troops could also have low morale. But Russia here has been defeated. Our men are running, sir. And all Wolf has to do now is just sort of buy for time. That's why he's falling back. He's waiting for uh, Ryan to finish his fight so they can hammer the Austrian left. And uh, Denmark has been reinforced so he can or he can engage full steam ahead against the Spaniard. Gee, France is just going for broke. They're going straight in. There's a general right there, the English general. There we go. Well, let's see a few soldiers go down there. Demos on the retreat. You just saw like 10 go down or 15 go down on this unit. You heard him so much it broke him. France artillery continues to hammer Espana. Espana's just being overwhelmed. And UK charged into the English general. They've got him. No, oh, they haven't got him. In fact, the English general fought them off. Looks like these guys here have seen some action already and... Well, that's a pretty incredible, actually. 
the general actually eventually broke, but um, that unit should have been able to kill a general unit, you'd have to think. The Spania infantry must have played a part in that somehow. Denmark's moving in. It's hard to say whether he'll just bayonet charge the Spania forces or if he'll just pull up and shoot him. They've got him dead to rights either way. Well, they broke one unit. They must be hard to shoot him. What the hell are these guys doing? The bro <laughs> wow. That sucks. We have killed their general, sir. Now they must break. Okay. Looks like Rokio seven they lost his general. The grenadiers are back. They haven't really lost a single horse since we last saw them. Despite the action that we've seen. Okay, Austria here, he knows it's over, he's just going to try and go in for a last hurrah. A spectacular end to his army. But they've been thrown back. Yeah, Ryan's arrived and they've, been, they've finished off there. So Austria's done. And I think Espanya is the last player left on the field. UK's got some stragglers that have reappeared. I don't know if Napoleon wants to turn around and deal with them personally or not. But uh, we might do a small cut here, guys, and wait until the rest of them moves in on this position because. Espana is really digging themselves in for the long haul. And France is charging in a lone unit here. General has dismounted, there'll be no retreat for him. Well, that was a short lived hurrah. He's trying to form a square like their cavalry. A few isolated battles happening, but um, they'll be dealt with in short order. But yeah, for now, it looks like it's over. We have killed their general, sir. Now they must break. All right, so we had General Fall at the very end there. Well done to Big Wolf and his team on their victory today. Big Wolf there, 1830 kills. Crusader, 1077. Mesmalim, 1370. And Brizak, 1536. Poo here, 697. Cardo Offal, 931, Rockhurt, 329, and JP Botola, 531. Okay, Wolf's kill counts here range from 265, which belonged to his cavalry, the top two units there. The rest range from 182, probably down to zero, belonging to the general, of course, no real surprise there. But um, cavalry did admirably well, those are amongst his best performing units. So, thank you to Wolf for sending me the replay, much appreciated, mate. If you want to see your own total replay feature here once again guys, don't forget to check out those links you'll find in the video description below. Hope to hear from you soon. This is Mika from Scouts and Entertainment signing off. Goodbye my fellow Scout Troopers. Catch you all in the next Total War Battle.